clubs have relied on for many many years you can't you can't get into sport thinking you're gonna make big bucks out of it the amount the amount country, of people who particular. the amount of people who've made money out of out of sports clubs you could count not even on one hand it is a loss making venture end of yeah and and then also there's the fact that everyone's just so negative and criticizing stuff and you've got that die hard group who are part of that system and 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 so they'll stick by whatever the club says almost and that often involves having a go at other clubs or having a go at the way the sports run or or being part rocking of that up, rocking machine up to a smaller that team all you're then hearing you're... if you're not part of that group is all you're hearing is bad stuff so why would you want to get yourself involved in something that's so bad why would you want to be around something if the whole world's against it because that's what you'd get that's what these that's what you get from the hardcore not at these specific clubs at every club that's what you get uh, every heartland it's that old club is what in, in any in any case yeah and, and what, i, what and I really see, I see. Is, is sharing of of everything because the resources aren't there to do it by yourselves so everything from mar- media marketing budgets to you know it's not just about expertise as well because if you've got someone staff, in it's got to be in your club as much as possible and if you've got someone in in one club that's doing the same role as another they should be talking because the more that clubs help each other out then you know you can share. if you've got someone who's yeah. exceptional at marketing so I mean, let's say york you know who they've done exceptional this year if he could give a you know a ted talk for example on what he's done and how he's done it if that gives you know, yeah. or 10 ideas, and then another club goes and uses that. Well, everybody benefits in the end. Of course they do. The more money that comes into each individual club, the less they're reliant on handouts, yeah. the less they're yeah. reliant on one big club coming with a big following and that getting them through. You can't just rely on those things. And so I think it's for, about creating, finding an efficiency. It's not necessarily about having one bloke to do the same job for all the clubs, is it? It's about that person's time being used better and if someone can come in and tell you i'm doing really well with this idea and they can go yeah. oh that's great by the way this has worked for us in the past and then you start multi-layering oh, oh, your, your and, and there'll be loads, loads of things oh we had that situation and we just did this and we ignored it or whatever and yeah you know something you see as a big issue the other club might have just gone away because i know from um when i was involved in volleyball that's one of the things that volleyball england set up was they set up forums for various people in different club roles so i was the media and marketing officer and i was kind of helping you know my club had done very well and we were getting in the local paper three pages every week so i was kind of putting together a little fact sheet for all the other clubs and saying this is what you this is what i did this is who i spoke to etc etc and then next thing i know we're getting inquiries for into our club because someone's seen a report in the next next door club yeah so it's all about that and and you see it at league one level that the, a lot of clubs come down and they're very dismissive of even having to be at somewhere like coventry yeah. they, they they think it's beneath them to be there and they're a bit you know put out almost that you're even suggesting they should we should be playing each other and whereas and it's completely opposite to the attitude that we got from bradford this weekend bradford could not have been more humble in the way they operated little things like just tidying up the dressing room and not leaving the dressing room in a state that somewhat you know a volunteer has then got to go and pick up all the rubbish it, they left it clean and tidy and they were very you know very good with it and you know very appreciative of everything that we were doing and there's little things like that you see and that's what marks out for me the clubs that will do better in the long run because they're they'll appreciate things more they'll get on and know the value of it whereas you see a lot a lot of the clubs that are in trouble are the ones that tend to have more of the attitude when they're going away places the toxicity within some of the the core because I, I mean Keithley's a fine example they've all just been slagging each other off haven't they when you think about yeah. it like the chairman um, won't talk to the two directors or the director left the, the owner sorry left the board but won't sell his shares and it's like there's a fundamental problem there and then when you see what what and I, I feel like the out the the outcry then is that's because our club aren't treated fairly by the RFL because they just want to give special treatment to Bradford or special treatment to Toronto or special treatment to whoever it may be. But 
whoever, whoever's this week's special treatment but, but side. I mean, hold on a yeah. second. Those clubs are doing more. So if they do get special treatment, which I don't believe they necessarily do to the extent people want to claim, but if they are getting special treatment, it's because they're being proactive. They're putting more in than they're getting out right now. And sure, and, and surely that's better that should, for the sport, better for your. And that club. should balance out. Yeah. that should balance out over over a five ten year period. And that should be the RFL's job is to go and help the clubs that need help. Yeah. Now, not not necessarily the clubs that are need help because they fucked up, but the clubs that are doing something that's a bit out there or are in a, an area where they're not getting as much natural support. So they need to generate it more. So that should be the RFL to go and say, well, actually, guys, you know, here you go. Here's some cash to go and do this. Or here's your money to do your, this Sky Try program. Because I know there's some announcements this week that a lot of the Sky Try money got cut. That's unfortunate. So, yeah. So a lot of that. So a lot of clubs, certainly clubs that are but relying why is it on getting their cut? community is it activity, people aren't meeting their objectives, or is it because just I, I, I believe the simple fact that the money's not there? Because you hear a lot of people talking. I believe it's the money. It. Yeah, I believe it's it's not necessarily the targets or the or anything. It's it's come from the money and the the deals with senior people that they've had to do. Right. And kind of and the, that's got to be paid for somewhere, and that's where it's ended up. That's who's ended up footing the bill for it. That is so, unfortunate. That's not the way you want it to work. And the RFL no, and has had a bit of that, a problem with that sort of stuff. And that's well, that's where the, that's the what criticism... Had, that's what we had after the 2000 World Cup, wasn't it? Yeah. That's why the sport crashed out and all the shenanigans that went on. And that's cost a, you know, a bunch of people their jobs at the lower level. That's where the criticism should be like, levelled and not a special treatment to other clubs. And I'll tell you what, if you've got a problem with these clubs, they're the clubs you want to be speaking to because they're the clubs who are doing something right to get yeah. to be getting ahead even if it is through if, if they can get you know if Toronto can get 7,000 people to show up to a sport that they've never has never been played in that country before well you know if you, if you, you don't need 7,000 people to, I was going to say you, yeah. you, you get a tent for that and you're laughing you got you got an extra you got an extra seven people 700 people show up at Keithley one week and you're laughing and, and that would be that would eclipse their budget but all will happen is if if you know if you can't see these clubs would necessarily all go to the wall because it doesn't often happen in sport. Well, they all need to find they all need to find those people within the fan base that are positive volunteers, not people who yeah. are wanting either a credit for being something they're not or someone who just wants to be in the inner circle and that's kind yeah. of their main objective. They want, they want they want the job title. Yeah. So, but I'm sure all fan bases do have those positive people who are willing to be volunteers because i've met them at many clubs and, and you're a shining example of that as well um where you're working so certainly th- there's opportunities out there right okay the one the one thing that did make me laugh on this just just to end on this was on the key in the keepers statement they did say you know please please ring this number and gary schofield will take your call and i want to know how many people have rung up just to, for a chat with schofield and or to berate him about something or have a go at him for an opinion he's tossed out in in one time or well, other. that would be unfortunate because he's giving people an opportunity to come forward who are, you know with genuine ideas or genuine support and that's the kind of positive and is negative about a lot of stuff is Gary Schofield but that is a positive step that's a, a positive move that's you know it's it's looking forward and trying to be open and out there and and allowing that so I really hope that hasn't been exploited negatively <laughs> but the, you know. the Gary Schofield hotline yeah, yeah. Call, call now for vision and awareness <laughs> <laughs> press two for uh, leads in crisis <laughs> press three for mushy peas recipes okay <laughs> press four for chicken cottage orders <laughs> there we go that's the uh that's the news in the rugby league well <laughs> and truly covered massively this week timothy so now we're going to move on to super league match reviews Super League Match Reviews now, sponsored by Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. Find a wide, wide range of toys, gifts, Rugby League birthday cards and more at Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. Visit stores.ebay.co.uk forward slash Rob's Toy Shop and on any orders over £5 you can earn 5% cash back and also 1% of your order value will go into the SLP coffers by putting SLP discount at checkout. If you want to give your 5% to SLP too, you can do that by messaging Rob's Toy Shop when you make your order. OK, it was round 19 of the Super League. Um... Average attendance positive 
positive step with the average attendance, 9,593. So even though some of the individual attendances, like the first one we're going to get to, weren't necessarily what we would want, that is a very healthy average crowd. Um, And that first game we're going to get to is Thursday night's fantastic fixture at the DW Stadium, which finished an imposing 46 points to 8 in favour of the home side Wigan Warriors against Crisis Club Leeds Rhinos, having been 22 to four at half time 10,645 were there Ben Thaler was the referee backing up from Denver just as Ryan Hall Sean O'Loughlin that's, and John Bateman were that's quite an achievement when you think about it and I know the England players flew straight out as unlike the Kiwis who waited around for an extra day or more but, um, or more in some cases but there is well, there's a serious point to that as well that it probably is a good idea they do have an extra day in case there's been any concussion or anything where you need to wait out for 24 hours before you fly. But, um, but um, yeah, so it's not bad given that they would, you know, they'd lose, what, two days to flying and jet lag. So they're only really back in on the Wednesday. Yeah, and well, they're into, the into the players pre-game. were in a special cryo, I don't know, some long cryo water, chamber. water thing. It was weird. Anyway, they were, they were, is it the face the van the van that parks up in the park cryo, you and, I don't know it. There was a you to go and walk in in your undies. <laughs> no, they they occasionally like put a picture of I, the um I don't the think it was cryo. players going in on pre-season. Yeah, I don't think it was cryo. I think I'm just jumping to that. I think it was hydro phonic. I don't know. Anyway, so whatever it was, right? They were in this pool of stuff and that was to enhance the recovery. But Ben Thaler also backed up and did video ref duties on the Friday night. So. Uh, so that so he is earned his weekend. A- absolute effort, yeah. I hope he spent it well and not. But he probably was refereeing some kids' games somewhere or something. I don't know. But there you go. Uh, two you'd, hope, you'd hope he'd be allowed the weekend off to go and work on his sun, t- his excellent suntan. <laughs> well, they get that in the middle anyway, don't they? They, you know, they've got plenty of time outdoors. Uh, fan reviews. There was two, none from Leeds or Wigan fans. There we go. So starting off with Mark W. Leeds looking the same as they did when we played them. The odd moment of glory, like the miracle second half try, but way too many errors and poor passing let them down. And as I type that, Leeds pass straight to club to make it 40, worrying times for the Rhinos. Tony Club, when he made that break, he didn't quite know where he was, did he? Bless him. He was a bit like, uh, somebody take the ball. I think he could have made it if he'd have wanted to, but... You know, Tom Davies club. deserves deserves all the tries he can get out on that right edge. You know, the, the golden edge delivers so many tries, but he delivers so much work that he, he deserved the try. Shoddy and Mungo said, at least only a handful of Leeds fans turned up to watch that shite, but on a serious note, only 10k for a supposed marquee fixture is rubbish. Yeah, it is, but Thursday... This, the Cross Pennine, M62, etc., etc. Et 2018's M62 is, is not a place that anyone wants to be sat on a Thursday night, especially when it's in, this, warm. in this weather. Um, and the England game is an absolute yeah. huge factor in the crowd figure, uh, I would suggest, this time around. But anyway, on to the game itself. I mean, still disappointing, but whatever. There's, there's mitigation there. On to the game itself, and um, Wigan were just fantastic. The, the Golden Edge was back in force, even though George Williams was out. Josh Woods was very, very good. He made probably one or two bad kicks in the entire game most of what he did was excellent um he, he i think he deserved that try on on top of the work he'd done to, to create the first or second marshall try where he he, he created the space for him so uh, he deserved to get one himself as well that's what i was going to say the build-up to the second marshall try was absolutely brilliant the sort of dummy inside then then pass yeah. and even his long pass for the first marshall try was fantastic and yeah he rounded that off by scoring a try himself Wigan kicked a couple of penalties in the first half which um, I'd have felt weren't necessarily needed against this Leeds Rhino side but but hey ho it, it set things up and it meant we dominated possession of the ball because we kept getting it back and Wigan were very well disciplined in this game they didn't give a penalty away until right just before half time and they didn't make too many unforced errors uh, at all in the game really which is the opposite of of what you would say from the other side of things. Liam Farrell back in the side from injury. He scored probably the pick of the tries. Maybe you could argue Marshall's try at the end, but that was when Leeds had literally thrown it away. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, the only bright spot at all for the Rhinos was that miracle Joel Moon try, which I couldn't believe. Yeah. When I saw the... I, I said, like, when he'd got it down, I, I did say, I think he's got... I think that's a try, and I can't believe that it is, but it is. Um, so credit to them for that piece, and then uh, and then they just 
went on and remain never to get Simon. He's got a one game penalty notice off the back of that. Um, and we can end up scoring 14 points in that period when <laughs> remain never was Simbin.